What's up guys, Alpha Stoutland here, and welcome back to Dual Type Breakdown. If you're new to the series, which I can't fault you for since this is only the second episode, today I'll be looking at every Pokemon of a specific dual type and comparing them to see what makes them different from each other. For this episode, I'll be breaking down Pokemon of the Fire Ghost type. Regarding type matchups, Fire Ghost type Pokemon receive neutral damage from flying, electric, psychic, and dragon type moves, resist poison, steel, fire, grass, ice, and fairy type moves, quad resist bug type moves, and are completely immune to normal and fighting type moves. Fire Ghost types receive super effective damage from ground, rock, ghost, water, and dark type moves. The fire typing prevents Pokemon of this dual typing from being burned by Will-O-Wisp and Flame Body, but they also lose 25% of their maximum HP upon switching in when Stealth Rock is active. This greatly limits a fire ghost type Pokemon survivability, and you have to be careful not to switch too often if rocks are up on the field. As of Generation 7, there are only three Pokemon that share the fire ghost typing, Alolan Marowak, Chandelure, and Blacephalon. All three are amazing Pokemon in their own ways, so why would you use one over the other? Let's find out. The first Pokemon in today's breakdown is the Bone Keeper Pokemon, Alolan Marowak. Alolan Marowak has a base stat total of 425, with a stat spread of 60 HP, 80 attack, 110 defense, 50 special attack, 80 special defense, and 45 speed. Time to find out what this spooky Pokemon is made of. Y you know, besides bones. Alolan Marowak has the highest defense of the Fire Ghost types, and ties with Chandelure for the highest HP. This gives it substantial bulk against physical attackers. Alolan Marowak has two especially useful abilities in Lightning Rod and Rock Hit. While its third ability, Cursed Body, can help in a pinch by potentially disabling an opponent's move, it's way too situational to pick over the other two. Lightning Rod certainly benefits Alolan Marowak more so than its Cantonian cousin, since normal Marowak is already immune to electric attacks due to its ground typing. Lightning Rod grants Alolan Marowak an additional immunity to all electric type moves, giving it a total of three not to mention, it prevents powerful electric types like Mega Magnetric, Zapdos, and the very popular Tapu Koko from inflicting massive damage from their stab attacks. It also raises a Lolan Marowak special attack every time it's hit by an electric attack, which helps with its diverse special move pool. Alola Marowak's hidden ability, Rock Head, prevents its strongest stab fire attack, Flare Blitz, from doing massive recoil damage. Sadly, however, this is the only move in its arsenal that receives this perk. Alolan Marowak has a signature move, Shadow Bone, which even normal Marowak can't learn. And the Marowak family has another signature move in its arsenal, Bone Meringue. We're just gonna omit Bone Rush and Bone Club because, yeah, they're not worth using. Aside from its signature moves, Alolan Marowak has many physical moves to work with, which include Fire Punch, Flare Blitz, Earthquake, Thunder Punch, Brick Break, Knock Off, Throat Chop, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, Aerial Ace, Iron Head, and Outrage. It also has Flame Charge to raise its speed and Power Up Punch to raise its attack. Despite having higher attack, Alolan Marowak does have lots of special moves that also work in conjunction with Lightning Rod. These include Flamethrower, Heat Wave, Fire Blast, Hex, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Thunder, Focus Blast, Dream Eater, Dark Pulse, Ancient Power, and Earth Power. This vast type coverage also provides it with several counters to the types that it's weak to. It also has various status moves like Swords Dance, Belly Drum, Iron Defense, Will-O-Wisp, Curse, Parish Song, Endeavor, and Stealth Rock. Alolan Marowak does have recovery in the form of Pain Split, and it works fairly well with its lower HP stat. While 80 attack is somewhat low, the Marowak line signature item Thick Club doubles their attack stat. Not the base stat, the actual attack stat. So its max attack at level 50, 145, is doubled to 290. And even more insane is that at level 100, its max attack of 284, is raised to an obnoxiously high 568. Not to mention, Fire and Ghost provides great coverage against lots of types, so Alolan Marowak can do lots of damage to lots of Pokemon. And finally, while it's simply my humble opinion, Alolan Marowak is way more awesome than normal Marowak. Sure, Marowak is cool, but when you add a flaming bone and a great dark purple coloration, it ups the ante so much. Plus, it's dual type instead of monotype, so it has more stab options. Obviously, Alolan Marowak is a great Pokemon and is very popular in competitive play as of late, but it still has quite a lot of weak points that you need to be aware of before you use it in battle. Alolan Marowak has the lowest special attack and speed of the Fire Ghost types, meaning it can't utilize its special move pool without boost from Lightning Rod and is often outpaced by opposing Pokemon. 
However, that low speed means it can work very well in Trick Room, but outside of it, Flame Charge is your only way to outpace most opponents. 60 base HP is nothing to write home about. Even with 110 defense, without investment, Alolan Marowak can't take much punishment, and it just mirrors the fact that most ghost types are cursed, <laughs> get it, by low HP stats. Not to mention, if Alolan Marowak doesn't have Rockhead, Flare Blitz also quickly wears it down. Without Thick Club, Alolan Marowak loses out on tremendous power. While a Life Orb or Choice Band provides a great attack boost, it's a 50% boost compared to a 100% boost. Being a ghost type along with being reliant on its signature item, Alolan Marowak is extremely weak to knock off. Not only does it remove the Thick Club, but depending on the Pokemon using it, this powerful move could KO it before it even gets a chance to attack. The ghost type priority move Shadow Sneak would be amazing on Alolan Marowak, but alas, it can't even if other slow ghost types like Dust Noir and Sableye can. Intimidate cripples Alolan Marowak, even if it's holding the Thick Club. And lastly, Alolan Marowak, in an ironic twist, is weak to its Cantonian counterpart. Normal Marowak can also wield the Thick Club in order to land a powerful Stab Earthquake or Bone Meringue. So while Alolan Marowak does have several downsides like item dependency, low speed, and a crippling weakness to knock off, it definitely has enough pros to warrant using it. With great type coverage, moves to boost its stats, and a signature item that doubles its attack, it's a Pokemon that cannot and should not be underestimated. And it's a perfect counter to Tapu Koko, and that is always helpful. Give Alolan Marowak a try. It does not disappoint. The introduction of Generation 5 brought with it many powerful new Pokemon, one of the most notable being the luring Pokemon, Chandelure. Chandelure has a base stat total of 520, with a stat spread of 60 HP, 55 attack, 90 defense, 145 special attack, 90 special defense, and 80 speed. So let's see what the Spectral Chandelier can do. Chandelure is tied with Alolan Marowak for having the highest HP of the Fire Ghost types, and it also has the highest special defense. Chandelure has a monstrous special attack stat of 145. Even being on par with most legendary Pokemon, this allows Chandelure to inflict massive damage on opposing Pokemon, even if they resist its attacks. All three of Chandelure's abilities can prove useful in battle. Flash Fire grants it an immunity to all fire type attacks, while also boosting Chandelure's respective attack stat based on the move used on it. And Flame Body has a chance to inflict a burn should an opposing Pokemon attack it with a move that makes physical contact, so it can deter powerful physical attackers. However, Chandelure's hidden ability, Infiltrator, is arguably the best one you can use. This ability bypasses the defensive buffs that Light Screen, Reflect, and Aurora Veil bring, and neutralizes the status prevention that Safeguard and Mist offer. However, the coolest thing about Infiltrator is that it lets Chandelure attack a Pokemon even if it has a substitute up. This ability is amazing, plain and simple, but like I said, all three have usefulness in competitive play. And just as an aside, I'm glad Game Freak saw how utterly broken a Shadow Tag Chandelure would have been, and I appreciate that they decided to change it to Infiltrator. Chandelure is the only Fire Ghost type that can learn Energy Ball, Solar Beam, and Shockwave. These three coverage moves counteract its weaknesses to Water, Rock, and Ground type moves. Energy Ball is a solid move overall, hitting all three opposing types for super effective damage, and it comes with a chance to drop special defense. While Solar Beam is more powerful, it requires Sunny Day or Drought to be active, but this could work well in a Sun Team. And even though Shockwave only has 60 base power, with 145 special attack behind it, it can still do reasonable damage. Besides the three attacks I just mentioned, Chandelure has plenty more special attacks to work with. These include Flamethrower, Heat Wave, Fire Blast, Overheat, Hex, Shadow Ball, Nightshade, Psychic, Dream Eater, Dark Pulse, and Clear Smog. It can also utilize many status moves like Will-O-Wisp, Curse, Memento, Trick, Taunt, Safeguard, Ally Switch, Calm Mind, Acid Armor, Haze, and Psycho. Since opposing Pokemon have to be asleep to take advantage of Dream Eater's HP recovery, Chandelure can opt out for Pain Split to restore its health. And like Alolan Marowak, its lower HP stat works well with it. And finally, Chandelure has quite a few items that it can utilize well. It's one of the best Choice Scarf users, but other options include Choice Specs, Life Orb, Leftovers, or Z Crystals. These allow it to have sustain with its decent bulk, or deal insane amounts of damage. As you can see, Chandelure is a powerful, specially offensive threat. But as incredible as it is, there are a few negatives that can bring this Chandelier crashing to the ground. Chandelure's HP again mirrors the sad reality that most ghost types have no bulk. Even with 90 in both defenses, Chandelure can only take so much punishment. 
While 80 base speed certainly isn't bad, it's still a speed tier outpaced by lots of other Pokemon, although this can obviously be fixed up with Toy Scarf. Chandelure has coverage moves for every weakness except Dark. It does make sense, since it doesn't really look like it even could use a Bug, Fairy, or Fighting type attack, but the lack of those types means Chandelure is pretty much a sitting Psyduck against Dark types. So while Chandelure does have some negatives you need to work around, the pros certainly outweigh the cons. With powerful special attack, decent bulk, a wide move pool, and even recovery options, it proves to be a worthy Pokemon that can definitely be fearsome in battle. And with Toy Scarf, it's going to serve as a serious threat to your opponent. Chandelure is amazing, plain and simple. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, turn your attention to the stage for the final Pokemon we're breaking down today, the Fireworks Pokemon UB Burst! AKA Blacephalon. Blacephalon has a base stat total of 570, with a stat spread of 53 HP, 127 attack, 53 defense, 151 special attack, 79 special defense, and 107 speed. Let's see just what this Firecracker Disco Clown can do. Blacephalon has the highest attack, special attack, and speed of the Fire Ghost types. While Alolan Marowak definitely has higher attack with the Thick Club, a higher base attack means Blacephalon isn't totally reliant on an item to do damage. And with 151 special attack, it's going to do some serious damage to an opponent. Lastly, 107 speed allows it to outrun many Pokémon, ensuring it attacks before they do. Blacephalon has the honor of being the only Ultra Beast on this list, and being an Ultra Beast, it also has the amazing ability Beast Boost. This ability allows Blacephalon to boost its highest stat one stage upon KOing an opposing Pokémon. Depending on its EV spread, it can boost its attack, special attack, or speed, quickly becoming even more threatening than it already is. Blacephalon's signature move, Mind Blown, has a whopping 150 base power. Add in Stab and Boost from Beast Boost and items, and your enemies are toast. Just watch out for the nasty side effect of losing half your health every time you use it. Thankfully, Blacephalon does have a few more options for special attacks, like Flamethrower, Heat Wave, Fire Blast, Overheat, Nightshade, Shadow Ball, Stored Power, Psy Shock, Psychic, and Dark Pulse. Its physical move pool includes Flame Charge, Shadow Claw, Smackdown, Thief, Knockoff, Foul Play, and Explosion. And it also has status moves like Will-O-Wisp, Calm Mind, Magic Coat, Spite, Trick, Taunt, Torment, Quash, After You, and Recycle. Just like Alolan Marowak and Chandelure before it, Blacephalon has Pain Split for HP recovery. There are plenty of items that allow Blacephalon to become even more potent in battle. Items like Choice Scarf, Choice Specs, Choice Band, and Life Orb let it deal crazy damage and pretty much ensure Beast Boost keeps getting activated. Focus Ash allows it to survive a powerful super effective hit, and both Fire EMZ and Ghost EMZ allow it a strong one-time attack. It's especially potent if Mind Blown is used as the base for Fire EMZ. Obviously, being one of the Ultra Beasts, Blacephalon is a force to be reckoned with, but that title also means it has some very easily exploitable weak points. Worst of all, Blacephalon is the frailest of the Fire Ghost types, having the lowest HP and defensive stats of the three. It's also one of the frailest UBs overall. Not to mention, it has to fear priority moves like Shadow Sneak, Aqua Jet, and Sucker Punch. Blacephalon's move pool is pathetically small when considering type coverage. In fact, Blacephalon can only use six of the 18 standard Z moves. And unless you are fortunate enough to catch one that has hidden power, ice, grass, or water, you're gonna have a hard time going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pokémon it's weak to, since it lacks any kind of coverage moves for them. As high as Blacephalon's attack is, most of the physical attacks it learns are really weak. The most powerful of these is Explosion, which lacks Stab and simply KOs it. Then the next most powerful physical move worth using is the 70 base power Shadow Claw. It can boost its speed with Flame Charge, but Choice Scarf just works better overall. Plus, without a few Beast Boosts, Flame Charge won't be doing enough to justify using it because Blacephalon will be going down before it gets to set up. And finally, as cool and as powerful as Mind Blown is, it cuts your health in half every single time you use it. With Life Orb and its evident frailty, you'll be lucky to use this move twice before it goes down. So yes, Blacephalon has plenty of weak points to it, but this bombastic balloon beast can bring serious firepower as well. After all, you don't have to use Mind Blown for a Fire-type attack. With two powerful stab options, beast boost, and amazing offenses and speed, Blacephalon should not be taken lightly. It's honestly one of my favorite Ultra Beasts just because of how weird it looks and how ridiculously powerful it is. 
never give Blacephalon the chance to set up on your team, or else it might just blow up in your face. And with that, we conclude the Fire Ghost Breakdown, but now I want to hear from you guys. Who's your favorite Fire Ghost type Pokemon and why? And what dual type do you want to see me cover next? Let me know down in the comments below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure you leave it a like. I know I talked about this in my last episode, but it's really going to take you guys as Pokemon fans sharing this with other fans for this series to take off and for the channel to grow, so I'm depending on you guys, and I thank you guys so much for just checking this video out, and if you did like it, be sure you share it with other Pokemon fans. And if you like my channel, be sure you subscribe to join the pack, and hit that little bell icon because YouTube kind of requires it now. You can also keep up with me on my Twitter page where I'll be posting updates, hints at upcoming videos, and more. You can find the link in the description. Stay tuned for episode 3 of Dual Type Breakdown, because next time, by special request, we're breaking down Pokemon of the Bug Flying type. Until next time guys, God bless and thanks for watching.